All right, guys, so this is the first video in the cardiology, and we talk about the uh, AV nodal blocks. And if you just kind of follow the process um, of how we kind of, you know, kind of go through these, there's only four of them. And I think if you, if you follow the procedure, I think you'll find the questions, you know, challenging, but uh, very doable. Um, so hope you like the video. All right, guys, so <clears throat> it says a 74-year-old male with a history of prior MI comes to your office for palpitations and lightheadedness. On exam, he has wide pulse pressure and pronounced A waves in his internal jugular vein, and EKG is ordered. And then you get this. Well, I mean, this is just kind of a general, you know, say a general EKG, but when you look at your answer choices and you say, oh, I think they're trying to test me on heart blocks, okay? And you got to hope that on the step one, they kind of at least guide you into something that they're, they're looking at. Because just given the, you know, kind of the EKG um, alone, you know, there's so much, it's, it's like you'd have to assess for basically everything and try to match it up to the, um, match it up to the symptoms. So in this situation, I know they're talking about the AV blocks, okay? And there's four basic ones that you have to know. You have the first degree heart block, second degree Mobitz type one, second degree Mobitz type two, or third degree heart block. And each one has its own characteristics. Now, signs and symptoms of this, you know, it's like what they say up here. There could be dizziness um, and such, but obviously they're, they're testing your knowledge on how to read a basic EKG, okay? Now, with this, uh, with the EKG, you got to know essentially just some basics. And when it comes to AV blocks, there's only a certain portion of this that we're actually looking at, and it's called the PR interval. Okay, so here's just your basic kind of a you know the PQRST kind of routine. The P is the P wave, atri atrial um, depolarization. Okay. Starts here, ends there. Now that from here to here is called the PR interval, and that's what we care about, right? We care about from there to right there, and we care about how long it is. Okay. Now we can label this thing QRST, and so you know PQRST. But all we care about when it comes to the Mobitz is from here to here. Okay. Now that length normally. Okay. That length normally should be 0.2 seconds, or basically one big box. And when I say one big box, I mean from here to here. That's one big box. So the distance normally should be from here to there um, or less, right? So from there to there, it's one big box or less. That would be considered normal, okay? so. When it comes to a first degree heart block, what are they trying to tell us? Well, what they're saying is, is that it's an increased PR interval, okay? Increased PR interval, and that basically you have the signs and symptoms, increased PR interval, and then you gotta understand your treatment is no treatment, okay? Nothing, okay? You're not gonna do anything with that guy. A second degree type one heart block is that when that it's, when that PR interval becomes more and more elongated, meaning the distance between these guys, the distance is gonna get longer, okay? And then the next one, it's gonna be longer before it gets to the next one. It's a longer distance. It's gonna be more, more, and then perhaps even a dropped beat, okay? So it's going to look like this, PRS, then it's going to have a longer one, QRS, and then you might just have a drop beat in there, okay? That's a, a secondary Mobitz type 1. Now, the treatment for this guy could be either um, no treatment, okay? And for step 1, they say that's what you should be looking at. Um, step 2 and 3, you may be looking at atropine if you're symptomatic, okay? Atropine if symptomatic. And I don't know where, it's just kind of what I had written down uh, somewhere along the lines. So in a second degree Mobitz type 2, what you're going to have is, well, wait a second. I have a normal PR interval. And again, all I care about is this space right in there. I have a normal PR interval, which means one big box or less, or 0.2 seconds or less. And But eventually, I can have a dropped beat on that. So it's a normal with a, all of a sudden, a dropped beat. That's a second degree Mobitz type two. 
Well, what am I gonna do with this guy? Well, if I have a drop beat, I don't like that, obviously. So that's gonna be my internal pacing, okay? Internal pacing. And then the last one, a third degree heart block, that's where the, they're just, they're not talking. The, the, there's no correlation between a P wave, which is my, you know, consider my atrium, um, no correlation between a P wave and the QRS complex, right? Because normally you should have a P wave and then all of a sudden you should have a QRS complex. You should have a P wave and a QRS complex, you know, atrium, then the ventricles, atrium and then the ventricles and so on. Well, what you have here is when, is when you see an EKG where there's no association, you know, it could be a P wave and then another P wave, you know, this QRS or QRS and somewhere the P wave shows up. I mean, there's just no correlation. It's gonna be kind of jumbled, right? And so that's gonna be a third degree. So back to this question. All we care about, well, we're looking at that thing, so we know we're dealing with this PR interval. So let's look at it. If PR interval is from here to here. Is that greater than one big box? Yes, greater than one big box. From here to here, it's, it's one big box. Now, is it getting bigger or is it staying the same? You know, it looks like it's staying the same. So it's an increased PR interval, and it looks like it's the same size and it doesn't look like I don't I don't see any missed beats in here right so it's just a prolonged PR interval of the same size with no missed beats we're looking at our first degree heart block okay so again all I care about is this PR interval and then which one does it associate with first degree increased PR um, you know no no drop beat no treatment if it's a second degree this guy would have been getting longer 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 and then maybe a missed beat. It's either treatments, no treatment, or if they're symptomatic, you would say you would do atropine, okay? And then if there's a normal PR, normal PR, normal PR, and then all of a sudden drop beat, you're looking at a second degree Mobitz type two, where you're gonna do internal pacing as a treatment. And then again, third degree, there's no association. So let's look at this one. It says a 74 year old, well, well this is exactly the same. We don't care, right? That's just smoke and mirrors up there. So now we're looking at this. Here's all my answer choices. So again, I'm looking at, oh, well, they're asking about AV heart blocks. It's either type one, type moments type two, moments type one, moments type two, or third degree. I look at my PR interval and I'm like, well, wait a second. I, I, here's my P. They were nice enough to show me the P. So this one's got a P, but I, my interval's too small. This one has a P wave, very prolonged, but then they're telling me here's a P wave. So it looks like here's my QRS. I got a P wave here, here, you know, is there any correlation between the P wave and the QRS, right? Here to here, nah. this guy doesn't even have one, maybe it's this one. The P wave here is almost embedded um, right after the QRS. So I see no association of a P wave with the QRS, okay, right? So what is this? This is gonna be symptomatic. So this is gonna be a third degree heart block. What's my treatment? What do we, what do we say the treatment was? Um, well, I don't think we said that. We said we're either remove the offending med, the offending agent, or we're looking at a pacemaker, okay, defibrillator um, and, and such. You're gonna do something. You gotta get this thing regulated. But in this situation, again, it looks like it's gonna be a third degree heart block. So. The next one, it's gonna read a, again, this is the same. I'm just looking to see if we can interpret the, the EKG. So here I go. I know I'm looking at my PR, you know, my, my I'm sorry, my PR interval. It should be, it should be one big box or less. Okay, well, this one looks like it's, a, here's my P wave, there's my QRS, good association. And it looks like it's less than one big box, so this one looks actually kind of normal. But if I look at my P wave here to my QRS, what's going on here? There's a difference between this size and that size. Well, let me go to the next one. Here's my P wave, and then this guy's getting longer, so I have a P wave. I got a guy that's symptomatic. I got my P with my my PR interval. My PR interval is getting longer, longer. And then I got my P wave with no QRS. 
So it's longer, longer, dropped. What do we say that one was? When, it's, when, the, when the PR interval is longer, longer, dropped, it's going to be second degree Mobitz type 1 heart block. Okay? Again, a first degree heart block means it's just prolonged, prolonged, prolonged. Same size, same size, same size. No drop beat. A second degree says the PR interval gets longer, 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 and eventually could have a drop beat. And then the second degree, Mobitz type 2, uh, remember what we says. He says, look, it's normal, normal, normal PR. It's not prolonged, but then somewhere along the way, there's a drop beat. And then third degree says no association between the P and the Q, the P wave and the QRS. So the last question here is going to read that same deal up here. They're nice enough to tell us QRS was dropped, but let's look at it. There's my P, there's my QRS. This guy looks pretty good, pretty normal. And then um, that's obviously a T wave. This is my P, and then my QRS is not there. My P, no QRS. So this guy looks like it's a normal, normal, normal size, normal size, normal size. And then I have it here with the drop beat. So normal, 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 normal. And then it's not prolonged or anything. It's normal, normal PR interval. But I have these drop beats. And we know that, by definition, is going to be a second degree Mobitz type 2. OK? So guys, there's only four that you really kind of have to um, figure out here. And if you just stick to the flow and how I would approach this, again, you know, I'm not an expert on this EKG stuff, but if I'm looking at my answer choices, and even one of them is a Mobitz one, if I know the definition of, of what it is, I can work backwards and say, okay, I'm just going to look at my PR intervals and tell me, is it the same size? Is it getting prolonged? Same size with the drop, you know, with the drop beat? or is there no association? And if I just follow that flow chart, I have a good chance at getting these right. And again, guys, what I'm doing is, hopefully this one, this one's online, is I'm just following, I'm gonna try to follow the, uh, my notes that I did for this, because that's where my questions kind of come from, uh, that I have. And right now I'm just doing the AV blocks, and eventually we'll get to all this pacemaker, myocytes, and, and stuff like that. So, hope it was helpful.